I know most of you are waiting for an update on this Voodoo 2 card, but to be very honest, I haven't continued on this card for now because I'm waiting for some information from a viewer. And I think this will be a much better video to use what I get from this viewer than just trying to blindly replace ICs and try to figure out what's wrong with this card. So please be a little bit more patient with me. I will try my best to get this done as quickly as possible. I also want to know what's going on with this Voodoo card. If you haven't seen the first two parts, uh, the first one is linked in this video and the second one you should find when you finish the first part at the end of the video. The problem is still the same. This card is equipped with 12 megabytes. Each of the 3DFX chip should have access to four megabytes, but the FBI chip only has access to one, even though there are four megabytes on the board. So yeah, please be a little bit more patient with me. And there is another project I want to give an update on, and this is the 16 megabyte SIM module. Unfortunately, I am facing a lot of issues with this project as well. So this is also going to be delayed. I'm sorry for that. And I was thinking what to do for the next video. And uh, since I already have all the 3DFX stuff out, I thought like, okay, let's have a look at this Voodoo 2. This card came from the scrapyard, believe it or not. I found it in a pile of other hardware. It looks okay. It has some damage here on the SLI connector and a few scratches all over the board. When I turn it around, you will see, yeah, the... Immediately you see there is an issue with this memory chip and if you look a little bit closer You may spot the occasional SMD component that has been ripped off or cracked There was also somewhere a trace that has been severed by a scratch. I think it's here So there are definitely a few issues on this card and because I was unsuccessful yet to revive the other Voodoo 2 I thought maybe let's give this one a shot. So let's jump under the microscope and see what's going on. Okay, so then let's have a look at this Voodoo 2. First a physical inspection, checking all the surface mounted components for damage, cracks, maybe ripped off components. Oh, okay, here's already one of the capacitors missing. That may only be necessary for SLI, so it may not affect the proper working of the card. And capacitors usually, some of them do not necessarily need to be on the board. I think we may have to reflow all of these chips just to make sure. Here are a few of the chips that are loose, so we definitely have to reflow the entire chip. if. Just one or two of them are loose, that's okay, but here almost the entire row is loose, so uh, better to go over all of them because you never know if they are weak. If you're already doing the work, just, just do all of them. Wow. Oh, wow. That side is completely loose. So, yeah, this entire row has been detached from the pads. This card probably was hit by other PCBs when it was in that big pile at the scrapyard. I'm actually surprised that none of the pins are bent. They all look quite good. Okay, and now I'm looking at the SMD components. I think memory chips should be okay. Okay, here is one that we probably just have to resolder. Okay, this side looks good, only this one missing capacitor, this resistor, and, well, the legs, this is a larger task, but uh, still okay. So, here for sure something bad hit the memory chip and knocked off this entire corner. I know it looks bad, but if this still works, I will just cover it with solder mask and keep it that way. I do not want to replace this memory chip if it works. Okay, what else do we have? Yeah, everything looks fine. Here a capacitor is missing. Here is our 
trace that is cut. I think it's a very small distance to cover only, but we need to fix that anyway. So yeah, this trace has been hit by something, put a big hole in the, not a big hole, but that small crater into the PCB and damaged the trace. Oh, here's maybe another issue. This one we should check. Small dent in the board. Ooh, here is a cracked component. And this one also like almost disappeared. So there are a few things that need to be addressed on the back of the board. I think since the weather is still nice, I will just start with repairing this trace here and then I'll put it outside for the sun to cure the solder mask and then we'll take care of all the other SMD components. A little bit of flux. A little bit of solder. And a little bit of wire. Ah, this is good. Different light. Okay. So this should have been it. That's all. It almost looks like it connects to the VR next to it. We shouldn't leave that in place. So let's see. No, this is just some residue. Okay. So I think this should be this should be good enough. I just scratch off something here and here. Let's see if we get a tone. Okay, and here. Yes, so the trace is repaired. But before I go ahead and cover this part with solder mask, let's double check these other parts that we have spotted on the card. So I saw here something, I think this should be fine. Yeah, this is okay. These are also okay on the connector. Oh, what is this? Mm, the gold has been scratched off. It's a little bit unfortunate, but I do not want to have this going over to the other pad. Okay, that's good enough. Let's just cut this off. Maybe here we also put some solder mask on top of it. This scratch doesn't look nice, but... I don't think it damaged anything. But let's check, you never know. It did scratch the the copper trace below. I can see that. Okay, it doesn't look too bad, but I feel more comfortable to have this fixed properly. A small layer of solder and then a fresh layer of solder mask, no problem. So let's just put fresh solder over those traces and then clean it one more time. And then I can put fresh solder mask over it. Okay. 
Okay. All good. This one is not, it's just, it looks deformed, but it's pressed inside, so it could easily fracture and then you don't have a connection there. So let's better put some solder over this trace and we don't have to worry about it anymore. There we go. This is good. Nice. Okay. Oops. We have a tissue bunny. Okay. So Let's put over all those traces that I fixed on the side, some solder mask, and then we can start repairing the SMD components. Okay, I prepared my, my solder mask. We need only very, very little to fix those traces. And I usually use a toothpick because I can easily throw it out after I'm done with this and I don't have to clean my tweezers. Let's see if this one is maybe a better view. Yes, this is nice. Okay, so let's start. I'm just using very little. That tip is barely covered in solder mask. Of course, I want to apply enough that the Trace is protected. So we fix this. Let's fix the connector as well. Here's our fixed trace. I measured continuity, make sure that it's connected. Otherwise we would have to remove all of this again. And we also cover this one here. But I think then I can put it outside. Okay, and how much is left from our solder mask? Nothing moved. Okay, I think that's it. Do we have anything else that's maybe cosmetic? Just cosmetic stuff, a very deep dent. Let's fill it up with some solder mask. Okay, all good. Let's put this card outside into the sun and let the solder mask cure. See you in a bit. Okay, the card just came in from outside and there are a few more things that I fixed, but I think we can now see how nicely the solder mask here everywhere is nicely cured and protects our fixed trace. So let's start with this resistor. This is a 
4.7 kilo ohm resistor. Let's just see if I get a proper reading from this resistor. And yes, it's still 4.7. So we should be able to reuse this, no need to change that. So let's remove it, clean one of the pads at least to remove the solder that I can nicely put it back. Uh, soldering iron is not warm enough. There we go. Okay, I think this component still has... Oh no, I think the, the connector has been ripped off. So yeah, we need to replace this too. There is not enough metal on the connector. I guess it's here on the pad. Okay. Unfortunately, we cannot reuse it. So where do I get my components from? I showed you this in one of my previous videos. I have a donor card, which has a TMU missing. So I will just use the components exactly place to place, like wherever they are on this card. I will use them on the Voodoo 2 that we are fixing right now. And you see here we have the same resistor in this corner. So I'll just steal it and transplant it to the other card. Okay. Let's get this resistor on this card. So let's quickly measure our resistance here. 4.7 great okay so this part is fixed and i think we should be done with the front of the card oh no we have this one capacitor here so let's clean the pad quickly so we can just move the other component over here Okay. Hmm. There we go. I always need flux for soldering. I do not like when the solder joints look yeah, not nice. So, so let's see. Okay, you see how nice the solder flows here? It looks like factory. Maybe we need a little bit more solder. And we're done. Nice and shiny. Okay, so I decided to continue with the front and just reflow the pins here around the 3 dfx chips. Surprisingly, some of the sides are good, but then this one here, you can see that after, I don't know, 15 pins or so, almost the entire row is loose. Usually it's very rare that there is one leg disconnected. Usually it comes in groups, so you don't have to check every single leg. It saves you some time. Important are probably the corners. And just, you know, you can check every second one. So I think this uh, TMU, which is the one on the right, if you look at the card, 
This is TMU0, if I'm not mistaken. TMU1 is the one that we are checking now. This is the one that is closer to the VGA connector. So let's see what we get here. Okay, so far so good. Okay, bottom row. Oh, ah, oh. okay. So how many are loose here? Only the two edges, okay. Oh no, there are more. Okay, so this entire row has to go yeah, the entire row is loose. Okay, what happened here? Okay, good. Good. Okay, this is good. What do we have here on the top? Okay. No, all looks good. So only the bottom row here. So let's do this quickly. Okay, again, no new solder. We just reuse whatever we have. Again, I'm pressing on the 3FX chip to maybe bring these pins a little bit closer to their pads. No problem with solder bridges. We can always remove them later. And you almost, oh, there's actually a component missing. Look at that. Almost missed that one. What is that? A resistor. Oh, here. Oh, we couldn't see that. There's a component missing. There's a resistor missing. So we need to get that. sort of bridges removed on this side so we have here more sort of bridges okay and this one too so now I go one last time over all the connections try to pull the solder under the leg to have the most contact to the pad we still have enough of the flux in that area that should make the solder nicely flow towards the hot tip of our soldering iron. Okay. 
Okay, I think the rest here looks pretty decent. No need to get there again. Okay. Good. Let's double check if all the pins have reconnected. Now I need to check every single pin because I could miss one. Without a microscope, this is very difficult to do. I could not do it without a microscope. Okay, everything is good. first okay our 47 ohm resistors also back on the board how did I miss that yeah everything looks good all right so now the FBI chip I think this one also had the bottom row completely loose. Let's see, I think I see a shadow under these, yeah. So these ones definitely have to go back. I'm still recording, so uh, you can skip forward if you don't like to see always the same stuff. But then we only have the SMDs on the back, so I'm I'm happy. So there's a difference between the pins on the TMUs and the FBI. If you look at the size on the TMUs, you see, okay, and here's the FBI. These ones seem to be more narrow. Okay, still no solder bridge anywhere. Yay, there we go. Much better. Okay. Okay. By the way, I did the same thing on the other Voodoo card, only that I reflowed all sides, everywhere. Okay, I think we got all pins. Hey, sometimes it's just the front here, the back is loose. That's okay, but let's see if we can get this one. A little bit better connected.
Okay. You can see how the solder broke here and just the metal pin went away. So if you have something like this on one of the other chips and the leg is just not completely disconnected, it looks like the leg is still making contact, but you may still face an issue and the voodoo card may behave very weird. Sometimes it may not be always the case. Sometimes it's just on random, like when the card, for instance, is cold. You have problems. So let's say you start a game when you power on your PC in the morning and the card is still cold and it doesn't work. Just with time, while the PC inside slowly warms up, the card starts to work. And it may be one of these solder joints that cause that issue. So I think I still have to double check all the other connections that they are not degraded like this, what we have seen here now. I just want to make sure that this card has a long life and nobody, whoever has this card, maybe in the future, thinks that uh, it's broken. No. It's just a little bit of poor solder joints. So, and I think I'm done now with the side. So, let's double check what is happening to these pins everywhere. Are they connected or not? Okay, all pins are back. Great. Okay, now it's the next day and the next side of the card. So let's just quickly remove all these broken SMD components and replace them with the components from the donor card. If you don't have access to a donor card, you could use a component map. And for these Voodoo 2 cards that are built on the reference design, it's available on Vogons. You can easily download a PDF document and you see exactly what SMD component has which value. So this may be very beneficial if you need to recap or replace some components that have been broken on your Voodoo 2. Uh, we'll put a link in the video description. I will not video all the components on this card now that I will replace. Uh, you have seen enough soldering today. But just a few of them. Okay, other side. C. 106 missing this is on one of the TMUs and you still have some of the old component left so let's see here it is So as I said, if you want to know the values, you can look up the component map and you will see what value this capacitor has. Now put it on the screen, just highlight it maybe from that document. Okay. I really wonder if this Voodoo 2 will work first try. I mean, it doesn't look completely mangled. I have no reason to 
doubt that this Voodoo 2 is going to work, but you never know. Quite some soil here on this side. Well, that probably would be enough already. Okay. So next one is done. This one we fixed already. So now we are at the FBI chip. There are two, three, four. So what do we have? C58. We have C50, C151 and C68. Let's start with the C58. Done. I really go one by one, that makes it easier to not make mistakes with the values in case they are different. Hot tweezers I think would be very nice for such a task, but I don't have them. Eh. Someday maybe. If you're wondering, I do use my solder wire from 1998. I showed this in one of my previous videos. Oh! Okay. So now we really need to look up what C151 is. Okay. <laughs> that must have been broken already. I didn't pay attention. I thought they were all good. So, I am looking for C151. This is a 1 nanofarad, 25 volts, 603. So, 1 nanofarad. 1 nanofarad. And it was the light color. So, I believe it's probably something like C51. Let's try this one. One nanofarad. Now, of course, there could be cracked components, but I don't see anything. Ah, oh, here's one missing, same like before. Just completely ripped off the board, broken out on both sides. C73. So C73. This one. Okay, this looks a little bit suspicious. Uh, a lot of things look suspicious here. Even this resistor array right next to it. What happened here? That may be just a scratch, but this doesn't look like the original solder. It is a 100 nanofarad 603. So this one should be 100. Let's see. Oh, this is one microfarad. This is not 100 nanofarad. So I did find a 100 nanofarad cap in my spare parts. And here it is. This is the one that should go here. I got this off a motherboard where I took off connectors and a lot of other components because some of these older boards have just 
the right components for anything from that era. So always a good idea to have some spare parts, small electronic components. There we go. Now oh, I got it. And the other side. And done. So I learned this right now. First clean the pads, then remove the solder, then you can solder something new on it. So, okay, so this is super easy. And now you can go over with a solder wick and have no debris stuck on it. Very nice. Okay, learned something. There you go. Okay, then we have C125. This one is cracked in half. I think I'll also replace this resistor here. It just doesn't look nice. You can see the value. Oh, now you have a nice view how this capacitor looks inside. Interesting. Okay, let's get this guy off the board. So let me check quickly this this resistor here. It says 53 ohms. Yeah, 53. So this is out of spec. I think these ones should be a maximum 10%. And 47 would be 4 ohms above. And that would get us to 51, not to 53 or 54. So better put something there that we know is good. Okay, so let's measure this new one in place. Forty seven. One eternity later. Okay, I'm getting better with soldering small SMD components, definitely. The more you fix, the easier it gets. I think we have one more left, C84. Then we can check if we have everything in place. So I will clean the card now. I'll uh, measure these resistors that you see here just to make sure none of them is cracked. If they all turn out to be 22 ohms, I think, then we can start testing. Okay, I will see you once the card is in the test system. So before I put this card in the test system, I want to show you something what I mentioned before in the video. If you look at the PCB, you see how it's warped. It is slightly bent in the center. I think it's better if I turn it around, you will see it better. Here you can see how this PCB clearly is bent like this. This board must have been under tremendous stress. I tried to bend it back for weeks, actually. I put a water bottle on top of it that tried to bend it back in place but I think without heating the PCB carefully and uh, trying to not mess up the rest of the components it will be quite challenging. So let's see if this card works and if it does there is no need to torture this board any further. Let's just leave it as is and let it render 3dfx games for the remainder of its life. 
Yeah, let's put it in the test system and see what we get. Okay, the card is in the test system. Let's try to see if that system boots and if we get an output in Mojo. Okay, and... Okay, we get a boot. That's good. Let's see. Okay. Mojo. Mojo. Yes! <laughs> we get everything. We have four megabytes on the FBI. We have four megabytes on uh, each TMU. And it looks good. So I think we saved this voodoo card. Let's see. Um, I'm going into 3DFX Voodoo Rush Voodoo 2 setting. This was a mistake that I made with the previous uh, Voodoo tool from Diamond. I had the wrong patch installed. Okay, so let's see. Do we get the menu? Yes, we get the menu and... Okay, it's a little bit off, but uh, yeah, it looks good. We are running in 3DFX mode and... This Voodoo 2 has been saved. Yeah, so the gamma is a little bit off, but yeah, there we go. Lara running on a Voodoo 2 Diamond Monster 3D2. Well, at least this one got saved, but I'm pretty confident that we'll figure out what's happening to the other card as well. Okay, so I guess this is it for this video. Let me know what you think about this project and if you're relieved that at least one Voodoo 2 has been saved, which was destined to be recycled. So thank you so much for watching, for your time. Leave a like for this video if you enjoyed the content. And a big thanks to all my Patreons. Thank you so much and see you in the next one. Bye bye.